Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online. It is indeed a pleasure to have with us on today's show two very very prominent people here in South Florida. Um Lodovica Martella and I want to make sure I have these names correct. And she's a researcher, a journalist. She's the uh, coordinator, the program coordinator for climate and heat health um, with the Miami-Dade County Office of Resilience. And we have a long, a beautiful bio of her. And that's why we're going to be talking to her on this show. And we'll hear more about her background, what she does, the community services, etc., that they offer. And on the left of the screen there, we have Dr. Cheryl Holder, who is live and direct in her medical office there at, uh, uh, am I correct, at Jackson Hospital, Dr. Holder? Yes. Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Jackson Memorial in Miami. And Dr. Holder. Uh, is an associate dean or the associate dean for diversity, equity, inclusivity, and community initiatives, associate professor, etc., at uh, Florida International University. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping, and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250, or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725. So, Dr. Cheryl and uh, Ludovica, welcome to the show. Thank you Thank so much you. for having us. Well, it's yes. wonderful. And we want to be as real and as natural as direct. We got a, an audience all over the world, you know, with social media. The globe has become smaller and people all over the world uh, look at our programs. Uh, plus, um, uh, the, the, the Viewers from different parts of the world normally contact their relatives and friends in Florida or wherever we have a guest from in the world and they will let them know about that uh, person's uh, services and uh, whatever community services they have to offer. So it's really interesting. It's nice to have you all with us. And um, for me on the screen, I see... Uh, Lodovica on the right side and I always like to start on my right so you tell us a little bit before we get in with Dr. Holder 
tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where you're from, and you know a little more, on, a little brief on your profession and background. Then we'll have Dr. Holder share hers with everybody. Plus, we will get into our topic of discussion. We'll interact and cut in here and there, and let our audience benefit from what you all have to share. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. My pleasure well, too. Uh, in terms of my background, I uh, am originally, since you asked, uh, from uh, Rome, Italy, but I have lived in the United States uh, for about 15 years. So, so all of my educational and career formation has been here in the United States. I uh, started off my career as, you know, as a peer, I would say, of you as a, a journalist. And I've always been covering commuted, uh, community related issues. So, my goal has always been to make digestible content for the community to uh, use in their own daily lives. And climate change and health, and I'm referring to physical and mental health, has always been one of the topics that I've been mostly focused on. So I worked uh, in different sectors. I worked with the United Nations, uh, specifically on um, climate change and how it affects vulnerable communities, especially women and women who work in the fields such as agricultural fields um, and how they are impacted from climate related uh, issues and changes. I have worked with indigenous communities uh, in the United States on uh, indigenous and community-led climate solutions. And uh, I have made my way to uh, South Florida as the uh, first uh, climate and heat health program coordinator uh, alongside the Jane Gilbert, who is the first chief heat health uh, officer at Miami-Dade County. And this is important to point out because um, extreme heat temperatures have actually always uh, been um, not really highlighted in terms of climate change effects. We usually tend to look at climate change uh, effects in terms of things that are very visible, so tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, and extreme heat is actually called a silent killer because we don't see it, we normalize it. And that's why um, it is important now to have this kind of um, position within Miami-Dade County so that we can bring um, to light the effects really that extreme heat does, especially on vulnerable populations on both their physical and mental health. Interesting, interesting. So before we get more into details with climate and heat, health, etc., we want to hear a little bit about Dr. Cheryl Holder. So tell us, Dr. Cheryl, where are you from originally? Uh, you were born in Miami, how you ended up uh, at Jackson Memorial, uh, what motivated you to get into medicine, etc.? Well, my history takes me back to Kingston, Jamaica. That's where I'm, I was born, in oh, Kingston. Oh, so we all Outside Caribbean. We all remember? Caribbean. You know, I'm from yes, Trinidad and Tobago. Are. So we are neighbors. That's uh, neighbors, a big, yes. big to start with there. <laughs> yeah, and Kingston to New York. So I've lived in New York. And if you're Caribbean folks, you guys know my community of Cambria Heights, which is a very Caribbean community in Queens, New York. Then I went on to college in New Jersey, came back, went to medical school in Washington, D.C. Then I came back to New York to do my training in internal medicine at Harlem Hospital. I, I got my education under a program called National Health Service Corps. So people out there, if you want to go to medical school, there are scholarship programs available. This one paid for my medical school and said, when I'm done, if I do primary care, I have to pay back in time what they paid and they paid for four years so i had to pay back four years of time working in a poor community and that's how i ended up in miami okay. many years ago okay so how you ended up yeah. at uh, jackson hospital jackson. You know. tell us about that right because jackson hospital is the only safety net hospital here in miami and since that's where i've 
pledge to work in the community. That's where I ended up. And I stayed. And this is now 35. This is my 35th year at Jackson Memorial Hospital. Wow. And what do you what, what do you exactly do at Jackson Memorial now? I'm an internist. And I've done, so when you're an internist, you take care of all the problems of adults, high blood pressure, diabetes. I try to make every internal and external, or everything you have working as well as possible. So if you have blood pressure, diabetes, cancers, I start the evaluation, stabilize what I can, treat what I can, and then I coordinate referrals to all the different specialists, depending on what organ systems might be at risk. And that I've been doing for 30 plus years. But as we learn more, what makes people sick? It's not so much that the genetics are a problem, but it's where they live, what they're exposed to, where they work, all the stressors, all the pollution, and the other factors in their community. That's what drives you to end up with your blood pressure, diabetes, and your strokes, and your heart attacks, and your lung cancers. So I look at it as a community-wide, population-wide intervention for our community. And that's how we're going to make our people well, is by improving the health of the community, improving the health of our society, and tackling those issues. So that's where I take this education and this work to direct patient care, but then mobilizing resources, teaching medical students, and getting our community working together to improve the health of all. So I don't really know the details or the protocol, but if somebody listening to you here on this show would like to come to Jackson Memorial Hospital and get your services and your care, can they do that? Can they make requests for Dr. Cheryl to be their medical advisor or whatever? Well, our system is a little different. I only see uninsured. So usually you come see me in my clinic after you've been in the hospital or you've been in the emergency room. You can call, but the waiting is long. And you have to, if you have no insurance, then you'll get assigned to a primary care doctor. And there's several here. I am in the FIU clinic. So you could ask for the FIU clinic doctor and you'll be assigned. You may or may not be assigned to me because that's one thing in our program. We work as a team. So you'll be assigned to the FIU clinic. If you're on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday, I'll see you. If you're assigned another day, you'll see whoever is there. Since there's such a long wait and most people who come through this need to be seen, uh, I'd say don't wait for this one particular doctor. Come in, get the care, and then you can ask for the FIU doctor on Wednesday, which will be Dr. Holder. No, the reason why I ask that is simply because, you know, um, doctors are interesting. Sometimes you see some doctors and you get more sick by just looking at them. <laughs> and there are some doctors, as soon as they talk to you, without even giving you a medication, you feel better. That comfort and that care and that smile. I mean, it has that, that mind over matter technicality. So, I mean, I've, I've seen that and patients go back home feeling much healthier without even beginning to start to use this prescription. That is true, that relationship matters and that feeling confident in your physician matters. And I have a feeling though, we kind of hire a lot of folks here at Jackson that kind of meet that bill. So let's let's hope. Because no. many times our popul it's so hard to get an appointment that you're kind of sick. So I'd hate folks turn people down when they really just need to come get the care mm -hmm. and then work on that part later. That is interesting. Will you be amazed? Do you see how time just goes? I know you're a busy person. You're at the hospital in your medical office right now at your medical clinic. So time just goes. Uh, um, and just to make sure I have um, uh, our friend here, your name pronounced correctly. Eh? It is uh, Ludovica. Would you believe that we have already been talking for 15 minutes? 
Oh yeah, <laughs> 15 minutes is gone. I'm but I, I know that will happen. That will happen in the introduction and the whole getting to know you all. But that's very important for our audience because they need to know with whom we are talking, where you're from, your background. And it clicks, it clicks, it connects with our viewers. As I said before, we, our international viewers and national viewers, they all have a connection with America, especially Miami. Miami is sort of connected, you know, with people all over the world. And if it, it's not professional, at, is, at least it's with the cruise line. Somebody at least come to Miami as a tourist. So somebody knows somebody somewhere, somehow with uh, Miami, with Florida, South Florida. So that's why, you know, I, I always love to hear the background of people and where they're from. And, um, and it's interesting. Here, um, Ludovica is from Rome, Italy. You're from originally Jamaica. I'm from Trinidad. What an international bond. And we are here in South Florida. I mean, that's what humanity is all about. That's what the world is all about. I tell people all the time, different people different colors different races beautify the world it makes things look more beautiful sounds more beautiful and bring that strength of humanity together so i always begin the show by wanting our audience to know who we are where we're from and what is our profession so people can relate you see they gotta relate they gotta relate so let us go on a short break we gotta go just for a few seconds um and then we'll get back immediately after and get into your speciality into climate and heat health program services that you all offer we're going to get to know more about that why you got into that we'd like to know why you got into this because i know it has some political ups and downs but why you guys chose to serve in this area and to let the world know more about climate and heat health um, program services etc all right so to our viewers out there stay tuned um, when we come back, we will continue this conversation with a uh, lot of Vika, who is a researcher and journalist uh, with climate and heat health uh, services. She's the coordinator of that program uh, with Miami-Dade County Office of Resilience. And uh, of course, we have Dr. Uh, Cheryl Holder with us, who is a specialty, uh, a, a specialist in different fields and different walk of life, and she's also part of this this uh, community services and educational program of climate and uh, heat health uh, services and etc. So stay tuned. When we come back, we will continue this conversation. As we say, inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhar rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Uh, once more, it is a pleasure to have with us on today's program uh, Lodovica Martella. 
and uh, Dr. Cheryl Holder. Welcome back to the show, uh, Lodovica and Dr. Cheryl. Thank you. Good. So tell us, tell us a little bit um, about what motivated you all to get involved in this climate and heat um, program and what it, it is all about, you know, why, what, uh, etc. Because people hear sometimes on the television, but they don't, sometimes you hear the political aspect about it this one involved this one supports that one doesn't believe this one believes and why you all chose because busy people interesting career you guys got and to choose to serve the the humanity from this point of view i think that's interesting and that's why i really love the fact that you all took the time to be with us on this show so we can educate the world a little more tell us Whoever you want to go for it. Dr. Cheryl, you want to go for it? Okay. Well, you know, I've told you from way back that I've always done primary care in poor communities. Right. And once you take care of people in Miami, you cannot miss the impact of heat. Between the people who work outdoors, from my folks who were getting sick because it was so hot in their homes and they couldn't afford their light bills, all these little things that people take for granted Mm -hmm. is already happening to the poor people that I care for. And I talk about it more if you have more deep time at a TED Talk, and we can talk about that, where you hear my patient stories. And when you day-to-day -day talk with people who are selling fruits, and you guys, if you're walking in Miami or any intersection, you see fruit vendors, people are selling flowers. These folks are out day and night in the heat, and it doesn't get cool at night, so it's always hot. And their kidneys, you see some changes in their blood from the kidneys. They're getting dehydrated. And for the folks who are on fixed income, not being able to pay for your AC so they can't even run it, which then causes their mood, causes sleep disorders, causes their lung problems to worsen. This is what I was seeing day in and day out. From about 2016, it started hitting me that something is happening to the population I care so for. So what are you saying exactly? That when a person sits in the heat, you get all this repercussion effects in your body? How, tell us a little exactly. bit about that. You know, it's interesting. I had to go to do a lecture. A lecture? A lec no, I was going to perform a wedding on Saturday. And I really and truly sat down outside. I was not sitting in the sun directly. I sat on I sat on the on the patio, the verandas we'd see. But for some reason, that was about two hours before. When I got up, before I went and take a shower, I really started feeling dazed and dizzy and out of it. And I was wondering what is wrong with me? Is something wrong with me? And I couldn't put my finger on it. But now you are mentioning this, and that is really, really amazing. I mean, it, it's live and direct. It happened, and I kept on thinking. I kept on thinking um, what went on. I had a lecture on Sunday with a bunch of doctors. It was all about a, it was a graduates program with a bunch of families and doctors, two, three hundred people. And uh, my wife even went and asked the doctor, one of our friends, what has gone wrong with him? This is what was happening. And now that you say this, it makes so much sense. So could you elaborate a little more about some of well, these effects? Because people can be stressed exact. out, really, not knowing what's going on. Right. Now, that's what you're talking about is when we see the, the acute effects oh. of the heat. And that's where the slow, it comes on you slowly because the dehydration. So you, and also when it's so hot and humid, your sweating isn't quite the same. So you're not able to cool your body if there were a breeze or something happening. And our temperatures now feel like 100 because even though it's only 90, because of the humidity, it feels hotter and your body cannot mm -hmm. adjust rapidly enough, especially if you're not aware and you're not taking in the fluids. If mm -hmm. you have any kind of medication that can cause your electrolytes, your fluid balance to go off, it happens even more. So people who are on blood pressure medicine sometimes will see problems. People who wear too much, a little bit more clothes, so the body can't release the heat, 
you'll see it happening. Um, just recently, Carla Santana, who's this world famous musician, just had a heat episode while he was performing in the middle of Detroit because it is so hot and your body cannot adjust rapidly, especially as you get older. And if you have a little bit more body fat, you're going to have the problem of feeling it. And one of the first signs is the dehydration. And then you start getting that brain fog and feeling a little tired, a little weak, a little bit disoriented a bit, then you will pass out. The musician Carlos Santana collapsed on stage. Luckily, you were sitting down and you were able to go in and get cool. So you didn't extend to that degree. So that's one of the impact we're going to see more and more because with climate change, there are more hot days, more days where it's going to feel like 90 and 100, more days where your air is just not moving like it should, so you're going to cool down. So as the years go on, more and more of this and more people are going to feel it. But my patients have been feeling this for years, and that's what pushed me to say something has to be done. But first, I had to learn more about what was happening. And that's where I started learning about, about climate change, learning about the 1.5 degrees rise, learning about the sea, the sea level rising and the glaciers melting and the impact that it's having on people's health right now, especially poorer people, black and brown people. And with that, we have to act because we have to save each other. We have to work together to make sure our lives are better. And it's not just poor people, other people are happening to all over the world, but we can make a change together. And so that's what got me involved. Oh, that is phenomenal. That is really, really, really interesting. So, uh, Lodovica, could you tell us, um, I mean, well, I suppose more or less that would be the reason why you got involved also. But if you want to add to that as to what motivated you, to get in involved in these kind of services. And then we're going to hear from both of you all again, uh, maybe when we come back in the next segment, because we got a couple of minutes, about five minutes again for this segment to come to an end. We want to know what are the solution and what are your recommendations and what do you guys do to help prevent the, the effects and the repercussions of this kind of heat uh, problems that people face in the world. So tell us, what motivated you to get involved um, in, in, in this sort of service for humanity? And I say humanity because it is a humanity problem. While you may be doing it here in South Florida, it is a humanity problem because our viewers worldwide, whether they're in India, they're in the Philippines, wherever they are and they're hearing and they're viewing this program, they can benefit from your advice. Yes, absolutely. It is a global issue. And what really got me into this field was really my early career as a journalist. I had a experience where I was working on a documentary on international issues with PBS. And I realized when we had one of our documentaries on climate change uh, that we were interviewing all experts on climate change. And I noticed the lack of diversity between the experts and the fact that really we weren't mentioning, uh, we weren't highlighting the fact that uh, black indigenous and people of color communities are on the front lines and are the ones who are suffering the most from this heat repercussion. But, but why do you think and that's the reason? Why is that the reason that the poor, poor people uh, face more consequences? What, because they don't have the facilities and the means to counteract the issue? What is the reason behind that? So we can look at this on a global and local scale. Generally speaking, because of practices that are called redlining practices, and these are urban design practices that have been um, practiced in cities based on uh, racial inequities and classes. And let me explain. When cities were designed, areas that were designated for black, indigenous, and people of color 
were actually, these communities were actually placed on purpose on areas of the cities that had less um, access to, for example, the coast, so the breeze of the coast, if we're talking about heat, and in were placed in areas that were more congested, for example, by traffic. These areas, because of um, really racial-based uh, discrimination, were um, taken away of um, heat mitigation, um, uh, like um, things such as tree canopies. Uh, you will see even today that m the poorer communities are actually in areas that are less uh, green, have less trees. And why is that important? If you are from a lower income community, usually, and this is what our data tells us, you rely more, for example, on public transportation, you don't have your own car. If you are in an area that is then, um, you know, that has less trees, you will be exposed to more heat because you're waiting for transportation, let's say for the bus outside in a non-shaded area. And this connects to what the Dr. Holder was saying. These people are more exposed to heat, heat temperatures, um, because of, of these practices, because of the fact that these neighborhoods uh, still today have less um, things that can help them mitigate the heat. And this goes also for the housing infrastructure. Let's just think about the fact that here in South Florida, especially during this time of the year, it usually goes from May to October, we are exposed to higher temperatures. People don't want to um, spend all of this money on their uh, electricity. So they tend to not invest in AC units, in air conditioning, or keep them off for the majority of the time because of the expense. So, so you see how the fact that class, income, and race is related to more effects of heat and climate change in general. Wow, that is interesting. Listen, that is really interesting. I think that a lot of people take this for granted and they don't really you know understand and they they more or less uh what i will say they reciprocate based on symptoms or things that happen but they don't have much uh knowledge about prevention to this sort of climate heat control situation and um this w is really educational you know before we go on the short break I, I i must ask you all maybe we need to come back and have another show on some other aspect that you guys think that we could educate the world more um on this so that people can be more educated and benefit that's point number one number two whenever if whatever um blogs or videos or that you guys have and you want to send for us please feel free to send it for us we will share it on our social media and our network we got a, a i mean thank god a wide level of network very diverse it's not just muslims it's very international multicultural multi-faith etc all right um, that is really, 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 really interesting. So when we come back after the short break, again, 15 minutes have gone in talking in the second segment. So you see how time goes. I know you were wondering, 45 minutes, what are we going to do? How are we going to get this off? It's just done. So when we get back, we want to talk a little bit of what you all really offer. What do you offer your organization, your services, what you offer to prevent or to help and to assist people who are victims or well what no, i don't want to use the word victims totally but who suffer the consequences of the technicalities of um, climate and and heat uh, uh, health problems on this topic all right so to our viewers out there thank you for tuning in as usual but stay tuned when we come back after the short break we will continue this conversation with uh lodovica 
uh, who is the program director for climate and heat health uh, with Miami-Dade County Office of Resilience. And of course, she's a journalist, a researcher. We need to get her to help us with some more journalism on our TV show. That seems very interesting, wonderful. And we're very fortunate to have Dr. Holder with us because Dr. Holder is a very busy person. Uh, she's just taking time off from her office and her patients, probably sitting there waiting for her outside. But we are really blessed to have her with us. And for her as a medical doctor to take the time off to serve on this kind of climate control and heat technicalities that people face, that is very, very humane of her, very humanitarian of her. May God bless you both and stay tuned when we come back. We will continue this conversation, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhal Rasul Balig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger so you and I are followers of the Prophet If we can afford one Quran Help us join in distributing the Quran So if you can't afford one Quran, do it Three dollars Ten Quran Thirty dollars A hundred Quran Three hundred dollars Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmah TV 24 7 online. Again, it's a pleasure to have with us on today's show Dr. Cheryl Holder and uh, Lodovica Martella. Uh, so tell us, uh, welcome back to the show and tell us uh, now what are. What are some of the things uh, you offer? What services do you all offer? What do you recommend uh, for, for, for people who are facing uh, complications with uh, this heat, uh, health, climate control technicalities? Well, let's start with Dr. Sh Dr. Holder. Yeah. Tell us. Well, we want everyone to know everyone is at risk. And so this heat, especially being in South Florida, is going to hurt you at some point right. if you don't stay very much aware and that it can happen. So what we're doing as part of the Miami-Dade County Task Force is having folks understand all the different ways that heat can impact you. Our heat season, May through end of October, there are times here that we know it's gonna get very hot. Are you prepared? Are you gonna go outside during the midst of it from 10 to two? Are you gonna have enough fluid? Because now that you're aware of what happened to you and you're aware of this heat season, you would not sit in the heat for two hours and not have enough fluid and not have taken off your jacket or wear the proper clothing when you're out there, especially for children and pets. Everyone has got to be vigilant to know that you have to protect yourself. Now that's just the immediate things that happen day to day. But what are we going to do to help protect our environment? How are we going to try and get some cooling? How can we get bus shelters? How do we look out for other people who may not have the resources that you may have to make a difference? So it's on an individual level, and we're here to educate you. On a community-wide level, there are steps you can take. And one of the big areas that I'm working with is educating other doctors, nurses, other clinicians on the health impact of heat and how it's immediate and what's happening to us now and helping the EMT and getting our community have just like your hurricane information. 
have information in their brochures about heat. At the parks, when people come out to play, make sure there are warnings in the park, make sure the water fountain is available, making sure people are aware that this can hurt their health. Heat is the number one climate-related killer worldwide. And folks don't realize this. Mm. And we're sitting here in Miami in a very hot place. Think when you come to when you come out to do concerts. Did you have enough water? Do you have enough place to get shaded? So there's so many ways that heat is going to impact you. If you went to Disney World, Epcot Center, the tourists coming down by the beach. Heat is a major factor for us to stay well. And we have to do it as a community. So tell me, um, <laughs> this is really interesting because I used to really, once upon a time, think that, um, you know, the more you go in the park and you sit in the heat and you sweat, it is much more healthier. So what is the fine line between understanding this and uh, being cautious? It is great to be outdoors, but if you're exposed to too much heat, your body sweats all the extra fluid off. You will not, if you can't keep up, your body needs to have a balance of fluid, a balance of water. All right. And so what happens when there's too much heat, you lose that balance. So it's not that you don't want to go outside. It's that when you go outside, you're prepared because our climate has warmed. And that's where we talk about climate change. The planet has warmed. And that one degree, almost 1.5 degree centigrade, think about when you have a fever. Your body goes from 98 degrees to mm. about two degrees more, and you're feeling sick. By the time you're 99 to 100, you're not feeling so great. Our planet is the same way. By the time it goes up a little bit amount, you're starting the anything that lives on the planet is not going to feel as well. So you have to be prepared. And that's what we're about is getting you prepared so you don't go out and pass out. You don't have the babies get sick. Don't leave babies in the cars. Don't leave pets in the cars because the heat can kill pretty rapidly. So, Dr. Holder, before we go over to um, Lodovica, um, does that answer the question for being exhausted in the, uh, in nowadays with the, in the heat here? Exactly. We just are not keeping up. Now, one thing that's happened to humans because of air conditioning, you don't what we call acclimate. Years ago, when it was hot indoors, hot outdoors, your body would adjust and able to manage the fluid balance. Okay. So you wouldn't feel bad outside. And so, but now we spend so much time indoors air conditioning that we don't acclimate as well as we used to. I love that. So that that's, a, that's a very, very powerful statement because we are so much in the AC, in the car, in the offices right. and at home. When we get out in that real heat out there, the body cannot adjust quickly and more realistically or practically. So it just knocks us out, right? Yeah. And we can prevent all of this. That's why we're here as docs and the clinicians. You can prevent this because you'll be aware of it. And there are times that you should not go outside in this very hot days from 10 a.m. to 2. Do not go jogging. Do not go play all these real big activities because your body needs time to adjust. By August, most people would have adjusted in Florida um, so they can tolerate more of the heat. But early on, May, June, July, you're not going to be as ready. Um, so take your time, have your extra fluids, be prepared, uh, have shade, and most of all, advocate for other people to get the same, that who may not be as fortunate as you. So mm -hmm. we can put trees in the right neighborhoods, bus shelters with, um, right now you could be at a bus stop and there's no protection from the sun. Encourage people way back, if you remember the Caribbean years ago, folks walked around with umbrellas. Yeah. You may have to start going outside, take your umbrella with you. And now we have special umbrellas that have UV protection. We have special clothes that protect you from the sun and from the damage of the sun rays. And pretty much be aware that this can happen very quickly. In one to two hours, you can go down. Interesting, interesting. So Lodovica, tell us. Tell us a little bit about what your 
organization offers miami-dade county office of resilience and you uh, the climate and heat health program coordinator what do you all what do you all offer and how do you guys um, you know benefit the community and educate the community or serve the community when it comes to this climate and heat health yes so i definitely want to echo first of all things that dr shareholder has said um all of these everyone is at risk but this um um these diseases that are related to heat are preventable so um in our work a big part of our work is actually to do advocacy which is also this well this conversation that we're having right now Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i definitely encourage people who are tuning in to share this information and to check in especially with people in their communities or direct relatives who are most vulnerable. So you want to uh, pay particular attention to the older adults in your family, uh, if there are any pregnant women, children, if there are any athletes, if you have pets, um, people with disabilities, or even um, if you have people in your community who are outside workers or who travel long distances outside in order to get to work. Uh, We want to make sure that we check in on them, that they know to uh, bring with them like a bottle or two of water, Um, that they uh, fuel on electrolyte drinks if possible, especially if they need to travel outside during the warmest hours of the day. So this would be, uh, you know, especially if you're going towards like noon, uh, that's usually like when the uh, sun is the hottest. So we really want to make sure that people know um, if they can perhaps, uh, you know, like schedule their travel time uh, earlier in the morning um, or like later on in the afternoon. Obviously not everyone is going to have access to uh, the luxury of doing so, but having already this information will help people um, prepare better and yes definitely finding shade um, not waiting in the sun not leaving your pets outside um, there is definitely great advantage in uh, uh, mentally and physically in spending time outdoors in nature uh, data shows us that it has an incredible benefit on our mental health but if we're spending time outside when it's warm then the, the benefits are completely wiped off by the fact that our bodies, especially this, um, this, this categories that I just mentioned, these people have less, their bodies have uh, less ability to adjust to the heat and release the heat. And especially in Florida, um, in, in parts of the world where humidity is high, that makes it even worse for uh, a human body to then like adapt and, and release the heat. So a big part of our work is really to spread this information so that people can become more aware because information is power and community is power. So we need to make sure that we connect with our most vulnerable in our communities and in our families. So, um, yeah. Oh, go ahead, no, I was saying with Ludovica, what you said is so important because this is a positive thing that we can turn into our communities, our family. You said checking in on people, create that buddy system. You have that grandma, your auntie, anyone who's older. This is a great time to call and check in and let them know that you're there for them. So this heat season, I use it as a season to say, let's reconnect. Let's use it to that checking in to let somebody know you love and care about them. So this can be used as a positive thing to build our community while you're trying to save lives. People always ask me, what can I do? What can I do? I said, you got a lot of older people in your family. If you do check in on them, if you have babies and things, check in and make sure that their parents are aware. If you have a lawn person who's coming, what better than leaving a bottle of water out there for your lawn person? because they're cutting in the middle of the heat. And then maybe you tell them cut a little bit later if your association allows it. But if not, put out that extra bottle. You have the the people, the postal workers, they're constantly out there in that heat. 
You can tip them if you want with a bottle of water. If we can, as a community, get the word out that the heat is real, it's affecting us every minute. Um, you know, it's beyond getting older from getting the skin damage because in 15 minutes, you can get a lot of sunburn. So beyond the sunburn, it's the long-term effect that we see in Dade County, especially of people who are worsening their diabetes, worsening their heart disease, having heart attacks, having all these complications because of the heat. But if our community is aware, you can develop a system of checking in, educating, and protecting each other. And so then do, do putting you all have out. Do you all have um, articles that you have written on this? Because we have a magazine, the Al-Hikmat uh, magazine. We're almost 40 years in, in wow. existence. 40 years in existence right i mean i i know i look like 40 and but um i happen to be the founder of the al hikmat magazine it goes uh, international it's all over florida the state of florida south florida etc so you almost feel free uh lodovica and dr holder to send us articles email us we can run in our magazine i think a lot of people will benefit it's very diverse also we have a lot of advertisers a lot of businesses a lot of wide multicultural uh multi-faith community and people that read the magazine so um listen that might be an area if it's all about education and informing people that we can send this out that people could benefit a great deal listen if one human being benefits and they spread the message we all blessed we all blessed what do you think? Ludovica, we have a website with so much information. Ludovica will fill you in on where you can get this, and they'll send the link out to you. Uh, lots of information that Miami-Dade County has put together, and anyone can access it on the web, and especially looking at the health impacts, and Ludovica can fill in more. Okay, Ludovica, so please, Ludovica, keep in touch and let us share some of this, and we can help promote it because, you know, we are very much into media and publications and promotions etc so um I, I i i really appreciate the idea that you guys came on the show we got a couple minutes to conclude so tell us what you guys would like to say in a minute or two each one of you uh, in a minute or so that in your closing remarks our viewers worldwide national international local can benefit from well, I will start by saying that um, if people will be uh, interested in getting more information on what has this, has been discussed, both myself and Dr. Holder have TED Talks on this specific topics that can be um, discovered on YouTube or on TED.com, and that's T as in Tom, E as in Edward, and D as in David.com. And really like what I'd like to leave um, people uh, pondering about is to not be um, discouraged. It is important to be alarmed and have uh, a reality check and be aware of what is happening and of the health uh, risk, both physical and mental health. Mental health is definitely all impacted by heat, as we have discussed. But it's also important to know that communities do and individuals do have the power in their own local realities to um, actually help each other. And uh, they do have power also in uh, what they decide to consume and put their money and invest their money in. Because ultimately heat, uh, the atmosphere is heated by the release of greenhouse gases and those are released by most industrial complexes. So really rethinking the way that we spend our money um, and really focusing on eating, for example, from like local farms, if you enjoy like animal products rather than buying at a big um, supermarket, that really cuts down the emissions quite a lot. Um, eating at uh, most plant-based meal is also important, helps with cutting off more emissions and also helps the overall health. Because as Dr. Holder also mentioned, if you have more body fat also, that can also impact your health and how you adapt to heat. So, um, and I will, I will leave it to Dr. Holder to conclude, but uh, definitely do not feel discouraged. You, you have a lot of resources at your own hands. 
Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Well I, said. Yes, Dr. Holder. Well, every climate solution, I have to start because we can't forget how we ended up with everything being so hot, more hot than it should be because we polluted our skies and polluted our atmosphere with all of these things from cars and manufacturing and everything. So we play a role. And with that, we are now having to cope with the side effects of having polluted our atmosphere. And one of the big problems is heat, but we can do things if we recognize what could happen to us. And there are lots of resources on our Miami-Dade County website at the Florida Clinician for Climate Action. Just Google heat and heat disease and climate change because we have a responsibility to each other and to our next generation to save our planet and to make the changes that we can survive. And heat, number one killer, climate related killer, but we can do things that can make a difference. Every solution you do, if you decide to exercise more in cool weather, you're gonna improve your heart. If you're gonna make sure we have more trees, you're gonna improve your psychological well-being. If you decrease the heat, you're gonna get less angry because the heat makes us kind of a little angry and a little ornery. So every step we take, if you decide to cut out red meat because that saves the planet, that improves your heart, decreases your cholesterol. Uh, it's just win-win. If you decide to create a buddy system to find that older person in your life and call them to check in on them that it's hot outside, make sure you get the water, that develops your relationships, improves your mood, improves our society. So paying attention to what happens to the climate, understanding our role, making sure that we make the changes to help the community <clears throat> and help each other is going to be win-win for our world. Well, so it's not to be afraid, but it's to take charge and start doing it now. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Holder, for that very, very interesting educational medical advice. Very well said, compact, and um, it's a pleasure uh, to have had you on the show and Lodovica. Well, I mean, it's really, really interesting to know that you are involved in this kind of services and all the community work that you all do together um listen this is phenomenal this is phenomenal I, I i i'm really amazed because a lot of things even myself i used to take for granted after hearing you all here i think it's really educational and there is a, a, a big need a dire need out there for people to be educated on this heat and climate situation so you are doing a phenomenal job god bless you guide you protect you and um your work is phenomenal so it's always a pleasure to have you all and we would love to have you all again just let us know what we didn't talk about or what we need to talk about and we can have another show and discuss um, other aspects of climate control and heat and health and what you guys do etc all right so wonderful dr holder uh lord of vika thank you all for coming on the show really a pleasure i could talk another hour with you guys but one well we have already crossed our 45 minutes and fifth and uh, three segments so thank you again and please the doors are open for you guys to come back on this show and let us know what else you would like to educate the world about so we can get the message out there all right so to our viewers out there it has really been a pleasure talking to dr cheryl holder and uh, lodovica martella two very interesting personalities i mean i can continue this conversation because i really benefited a lot i really learned a lot and it makes so much a sense miami is a place of heat we surrounded by heat so it's a reality talk show and i'm sure people all over the world face this so um thank you very much for tuning in and always stay tuned to alikma tv 24 7 online until then Assalamu uh, alaikum, peace be upon each and every one. Shalom, assalamu alaikum, and nice having you all on the show. Thank you. Bye bye.
Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi indo pack groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani and many many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com.